Well, it's been a long day with everything that's going on. I'm certainly ready and excited for Vespers here at Bethany Lutheran. Well, Pastor Ryan, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. We're, we're going to do a fist bump here. Oh, that's right. Yeah? Social, Social distancing. Social distancing. Very good. All right. But you look like you could use a Vesper service to get your spirits lifted up. Yep, I can. You came to the right place, that's Faith right. Lutheran. Yep, let's All do right. it. All right, praise God. All right, well, good evening for Vespers tonight. We're just going to do Martin Luther's evening prayer, kind of keep it simple. Excellent. All right. So if you want to follow along at home, you really don't need very much. Just um, your Bible, but we'll read everything, so you don't need anything if you don't have it. But if you want to follow along, your Bible and Luther's small catechism, right? Excellent. Okay, so I want to get us started. In the evening, when you go to bed, you are to make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, watch over me. Amen. Hmm. Let's do that. Okay, you want to lead us? Yes. All right. In the evening, when you go to bed, you are to make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, watch over me. Amen. Amen. And so next, let's read our scripture. How about? Excellent. And this is the scripture for Sunday for you all. Is that right? Yes, it is. Okay. Yep, this Sunday, so, March 22nd. All right. So it's John 9. And you're working on sort of a Bible study sermon, right? Yes, I am. And that's going to be uploaded onto uh, the Facebook this weekend. Yes, it is. Yep. And Thank we'll have you. ours uh, on Trinity uh, we have a different scripture, Trinity and Faith, uh, this weekend as well. Okay, well, our scripture is John 9. Let's read. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's work might be revealed in him. We must work while the works of him, we must work the works of him who sent me, while it is day, night is coming, when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he... Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus had made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It would... It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents, asked, his parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been blind and said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, 
Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sin, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. That's a long passage, kind of a famous one, though, isn't it? It's very famous yeah. and speaks to every one of us. Yeah. Amazing grace. That kind of Amazing grace, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, what's next? What do we have next? Well, we have a prayer for the end of our night as we are about to retire for the evening. And we'll follow that with the Lord's Prayer. Sounds good. Let us pray. I give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected me today. I ask you to forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously to protect me tonight. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, my soul, and all that is mine. Let your holy angel be with me so that the wicked may have no power over me. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And we invite you to join us now in praying the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now you may go to sleep quickly and cheerfully for this night. Thank you for being with us and sharing this Vesper service together. Good night. Good night.